welcome to concrete technology module 3 lecture 2 we shall be continuing with chemical admixtures if you recall last class we talked about water reducing agent and then we said you can use the water reducing agent to minimize the cement consumption at a given workability, increase the workability at a given level of strength and you know use the water reducing agent simply to increase the simply to increase the workability alone. So, we continue with that then we shall look into retarders and accelerators, air and training agent, viscosity modifier, corrosion inhibitors, waterproofing admixtures and anti shrinkage admixtures. So, continue from the last class if you recall we looked into uh, you know this a diagram which showed that we can use it in different way. For example, the same this is somewhat repeated in a slightly different manner in this diagram. In this axis if you see we have water content and then in this axis is flow table stable spread right. Now, this is flow table spread flow table spread all right. So, if you increase the if you use without super plasticizer you want to increase the flow table spread that is the workability you shall be increasing the water content. So, you increase the water content you increase the water content you increase the water content the flow table spread will increase you know increase the water content flow table spread will increase all right like this this is the curve. But if you add super plus, but supposing at the same water content you want to get higher flow, then simply, simply increase the, you know, add super plasticizer, add super plasticizer. So with super plasticizer at same water content, you can get higher flow. But supposing you want to maintain the flow same, then you can reduce the water. And if you want to maintain the same strength you want to maintain the same strength you can reduce down the cement also. So, you can have a cement saving, but you want to get higher strength keep the cement same. So, recall from the previous diagram it is something similar. So, super plasticizer can be used to increase the workability at a given strength without adding any more water. You can increase the strength for the same workability by reducing the water content and keeping the same cement same and also you can keep the water content same I mean you can reduce down the water con you know you can save on cement content by reducing down the water content and re reducing down the cement as well. So, you can save on cement at the same strength and workability if you like you can get higher strength at same workability or at same strength you can get higher workability. So, this is the way one can use super plasticizer. Well, it is important to look into super plasticizer compatibility that means, it must give the super plasticizing effect the super plasticizer must give the super plasticizing effect all right. Uh, set retardation could be some issues that means, you know depending upon the sugar content of the sugar content of the super plasticizer and at higher dosage it may be pronounced higher dosage it may be pronounced. Of course, it depends upon cement type because interaction of the cement is very very important it depends upon the cement type all right. There can be some secondary effects dip, okay. for example, if you do overdosing this can result in bleeding and setting delay it can result in high bleeding you know lot of excess water might come out of the system and result in bleeding and setting delay can also be there setting delay can also be there. So, 
one has to look into those no overdosing and right kind of compatibility should be seen. In fact, if you go on increasing the dosage of the superplasticizer beyond a point it would not show any further plasticizing effect there is a point of diminishing return. So, you the doses maximum dosage is added such that beyond that if you increase further you would not get any further plasticizing effect. So, that is the maximum and you should not have any kind of negative effect. Water cement ratio less means reduced bleeding will be reduced and you will get strength improvement as, you, as well. So, that is right and reduction of water reducing effect due to consumption of SO3 by C3A. This can be an effect for example, uh, sulfonated super plasticizer or plasticizer sulfonated compounds they might react with high C3A cement C3A in case of high C3A cement and water reducing effect may be reduced. So, because it is a you know sulfonated compound if you recall that SO3 uh, gets uh, you know as it is SO3 sulf sulfonation was done. So, you will have sodium plus and SO3. Uh, so, sodium goes into solution SO3 ensures that it is negatively charged uh, your super plasticizer is negatively charged and it can get absorbed, but supposing the SO3 is consumed by C3A excess C3A being present in the cement then reduction of water reducing effect could be there. So, type of cement also matters. Some accelerating effect is seen from super plasticizer because they can disperse the since they disperse the since they disperse the since they disperse the particle since they disperse the particle you can see that uh, uh, with super plasticizer dosage higher the dosage higher the dosage right with higher super plasticizer dose uh, you have uh, strength no zero super plasticizer if this was the compressive strength with higher dosage strength early strength increases 12 hour strength 24 but 28 day strength there is of course much uh, less influence so this is because better dispersion of the system that's because better dispersion of the system so it has got somewhat an accelerating effect because hydration will get accelerated more dispersion more particles will come in contact with water and resulting in better dis, you know better hydration process more uniform hydration product and that is why you have got somewhat accelerating effect of the super plasticizer. Well, uh, after you know time loss if you see there is uh, slump loss or in other words you know if you look at uh, slump retention of water reducing agent. Now, this is important. Uh, because of in case of ready mix concrete you would like to deliver the concrete uh, after maybe certain you know period of time after mixing because it will be there in the agitator truck. So, in such situation slump retention is an important uh, parameter or factor that means it should remain uh, green or you know it should not set. So, setting time of the concrete here is important and supposing you have control this is your control concrete without anything control concrete is this this is your control concrete. So, control concrete is here. So, here a slump and this slump became practically 0 after let us say some time say 100 milli minute after mixing 125 minutes or 20 minutes after mixing. Now, you have plasticized one that is this line just plasticized. So, initially it is high obviously, it is retained for also longer period of time. But if you have a plasticizer come retarder, it is still retained for a longer period of time. So, it is nearly doubling up the time when slump becomes 0, but anyway you might be requiring a some, some fixed slump. So, it can retain for longer period of time right retarded with this is with plasticizer, but if you have super plasticizer. So, then slump itself in the beginning is very high and it is retained for longer period of time. Note that slopes in these cases are more or less similar. So, the fact that you have high slump in the beginning right you have high slump in the beginning. So, as the time passes the loss of slump rate is same, but it can retain for longer period of time. So, is a useful thing as far as ready mixed concrete is concerned you have now more time for uh, placing no adverse effect on concrete in any case. So, loss of slump with super plasticizer as we have seen is somewhat lower. 
well hydroxylated carbo carboxylic acid type may increase bleeding in high workability and lignosulfonic ones improves cohesiveness by entraining air. So, these are some secondary effects hydroxylated carboxylic acid type all right may increase bleeding in high workability these are polycarboxylate and similar ones bleeding in high workability can be seen in this kind of thing and lignosulfonic acid ones may improve the cohesiveness by entraining, entraining some amount of air. Rate of hydration is obviously likely to increase and long term strength also may be improved long term strength also may be improved. Low C 3 a low alkali cement usually have more influence low C 3 a and low alkali cement usually have more influence all right. So, C 3 a should be low because as we have seen many cases alkalis and C 3 a they can interfere with the uh, um, superplasticizers action and thus it is better that you have low C 3 and low alkali cement. So, this was uh, uh, water reducing agents plasticizers, super plasticizers and hyper plasticizers. Now, we can come to retarders the another kind of uh, admixtures and we defined perhaps the one which will retard the setting and hardening process. Let us see what they are. Essentially retarders extend the time for the mix to change from plastics to hardened state or you know harden of course, solid state first to solid and then hardened state. So, solid state it requires more time typical dosage would be 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 percent and uh, examples are molasses, sugar, gluconates, sucrose, some phosphates. So, they are the retarders. In fact, uh, sugar is a good example. Supposing you are, your machine is stuck and you are not able to or your, your you know agitator truck is stuck in traffic and you know that you will not be able to reach the site in time and uh, actually it will set by that time by the time you reach because it is in a traffic jam or something like that. Well, if you put some retarder like let us say sugar sufficient amount it will never set. So, it is called killing of concrete concrete mix can be killed actually. So, it will never set. So, they are retarders temperatures have do have some effect temperatures do have some effect on the uh, you know retarding action and this should be seen this should be seen you know this should be also considered. So, temperature has some effect and shall be accounted higher temperature first reaction takes place retarding action will be less. These are common in RMC as I said because plasticizer come retarder is usually plasticizer come retarder these are usually common in ready mixed concrete ready mix concrete RMC stands for ready mix concrete because uh, you want long time lo you know somewhat uh, longer uh, slump retention because when you want to deliver the concrete at the site the time required may be slightly higher and therefore, uh, you like the slump to be retained and that is why you use retarder come obviously plasticizer to minimize the water content water required and save on cement you know for the same strength. retarders the processes involved or the mechanisms if you look at it blocking mechanisms where you know blocking mechanisms where actually uh, admixtures is adsorbed on the surface strongly on the cement surface and slows down the formation of silicate hydrates. So, that is that is the thing. So, basically they can be adsorbed onto the cement surface and therefore, formation of silicate hydrate is stopped because they are adsorbed on the surface right and strongly and therefore, slows down the process of, process of formation of silicate. A second mechanis mechanism could be selection by admixtures of calcium ions in solution you know basically calcium ion two organic molecules can form a complex with calcium 
right with com calcium ions. So, the retarders compounds organic compounds in the retarder can form complex with the you know complex with the calcium ion and therefore, prevent precipitation of calcium hydroxide prevent precipitation of calcium hydroxide prevent precipitation of calcium hydroxide. So, that is what it is. So, calcium hydroxide precipitation is prevented. Now, if calcium hydroxide cannot precipitate therefore, the reaction cannot go in. So, reaction cannot because calcium silicate hydrate formation needs calcium silicate formation hydration formation needs calcium hydroxide production you know the reaction of calcium has C 3 S and C 2 S forms calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate. Now, if calcium is not precipitating this two reaction cannot proceed. So, that could be another mechanism or both. So, both these mechanisms may be at work, but later one is just retarder without plasticizing effect. First one is with plasticizing effect that is you know uh, coating on top of the surface. So, this coating might also disperse the particles cement particles while the second case will not have this you know calcium ions forming complex will not have uh, plasticizing effect. Right. Retarding admixtures delay the end of dormant period you know dormant period we saw it earlier sometime dormant period means uh, the period during which a trangite is largely largely formed first 30 minutes a trangite is formed right and CHS formation really do not start. So, this essentially ensures that longer a trangite period longer dormant period and therefore, setting is delayed setting is delayed all right and after that setting starts and followed by hardening. Good useful in avoiding cold joints and slip form concrete etcetera etcetera. Slip form construction is continuous construction of vertical members chimney or even uh, buildings walls and things like that vertical members right. So, continuous casting can if you know casting goes on continuously. Now, cold joint is formed between hardened concrete and fresh concrete because they do not bond well. So, if you have longer setting period and you have put in a layer of concrete and you want to put in the next layer of concrete is if you have a longer setting period you are putting fresh concrete over unset concrete it will ensure that there is no cold joint formation because they will bond better bond better. So, bonding is better if the setting time is longer. So, you are putting pouring the concrete already unset concrete not set concrete. So, there will be no cold joint formation. Well, that was one class and just similar to this is the accelerator which is another class of admixtures. Now, accelerating admixtures are divided into two groups one is set accelerating and other is hardening accelerator set accelerating and hardening accelerator. Now, set accelerating means it will enhance the setting time you know shorten the setting time hardening accelerator will mean that it will increase the early strength gain. So, set accelerating and hardening accelerator there are two varieties. The sex set accelerator reduce the time of transition from plastic to solid state and extend varying as required extent would be as required how much you want that would as you want. Hardening accelerator enhances the rate of strength gain that is what I just said you know early strength you can get from here. Now, generally dosage varies from 0 0.5 to 2 percent on cement and usually are inorganic compounds they are not organic formations inorganic compounds calcium chloride used to be one of them it is the most effective accelerator and uh, can act as both set and hardening accelerating admixture. So, setting as well as hardening process it can accelerate right the calcium chloride, but unfortunately calcium chloride is a problem from the durability of rein reinforced concrete because it will initiate the rebar corrosion process by what is known as depassivation of the steel 
So, it usually some kind of passive layer forms over steel which protects the steel, but if calcium chloride is present such passive layers get broken down and it is called depassivation and uh, you know it is not preferred that is why. So, if you have embedded steel in concrete calcium chloride is not the preferred uh, admixture that is that would be used you know. So, in fact, it is not used anymore chloride free accelerators are what is preferred these are nitrite sodium or calcium nitrate or nitrite formate and thiocyanates. So, chloride free accelerators like sodium or calcium nitrite nitrate formate and thiocyanates are useful in this direction. As we have seen earlier high range water reducing agent has some accelerating effect hence are effective with accelerator in combination. So, use the accelerator come the super plasticizer high range water reducing agent this will have an accelerating effect right. They themselves have some accelerating effect and if you use together with an accelerator the benefit is even more it is more effective it is more effective you know it is quite effective it is quite effective all right. Set accelerator possibly accelerate the formation of ettringite because you see if ettringite formation is faster dormant period will be reduced. So, sex set accelerators possibly accelerate the formation of ettringite because we know during the initial phase of setting ettringite is produced during the dormant period. During the dormant period ettringite is produced and it accelerates the setting process it accelerates the setting process all right it accelerates the setting process it accelerates the setting process all right it accelerates the setting process hardening accelerator increase the rate of dissolution of calcium silicate hardening accelerator accelerate the rate of dissolution of calcium silicate and therefore increases chs formation as early age all right hardening accelerator accelerate the chs dissolution of calcium silicate and therefore calcium silicate can react faster and thus early chs formation can takes place so that's how early strength you can get high range water reducing agent enhances hydration and homogeneity that's what we have seen earlier thus useful in accelerating calm water reducing action. So, we have seen that they are good in accelerating come water reducing action all right. Well, it would be useful where we want early de shattering pre stressing is required. So, you want to do pre stress you want to do pre stress you should it should have sufficient strength gain because pre stressing can be done. If you want to remove the mold early gain strength gain should be sufficient and then only you should do uh, pre stressing or remove the mold. So, hardening admixtures are accelerators are useful where early de shattering pre stressing is desired. So, this was the second variety there are two varieties that we have seen other than water reducing agent one is the retarding retarders and the second one is the accelerators. Now, the third so third variety is air entering admixtures largely used in for freeze thaw resistance we shall be looking at that when we look at durability of concrete largely used in case of freeze thaw to improve the freeze thaw resistance of concrete right freeze thaw resistance of concrete. So, essentially what they how do they act they essentially they you know essentially this ones they entrain the air air bubbles into the concrete and this air bubble in turn cause release of hydraulic pressure generated by frost action. We will explain this process in details later on but at the moment let us understand what these are. 
So, these admixtures if you put you know controlled quantity of small uniformly it, it actually puts in makes it actually forms small uniformly distributed air bubble small uniformly distributed air bubbles that is introduced into the concrete during mixing and they remain also they also remain after hardening they remain also after hardening. So, that is what it is. So, air entering admixtures they allow for small uniformly distributed air bubbles to be introduced during mixing and remained after hardening. The dosage is usually 0 0.2 to 0.4 percent on cement, dosage is usually 0 0.2 to 0.4 percent on cement. Well, they do not foul with the performance of uh, dispersing admixtures that is our water reducing admixtures. Right? Now, may contain only 1 to 5 percent solid thus very powerful and let us look at principle how it works. Obviously, if you are introducing pore one issue is that strength would be reduced you know. So, if you introduce pores strength would be reduced reduced strength would be reduced 5 to 6 percent reduction when you have added 1 percent for each 1 percent of additional air. So, you add one more percent of air 5 to 6 percent reduction in strength will occur mainly as I said used for freeze thaw resistance freeze thaw resistance you know mainly for freeze thaw resistance. How does it do it mechanics mechanic I mean mechanism well we will see that, but improves cohesion and reduces tendency to bleed that is of course, a little bit of air entertainment actually improves the workability that is a uh, side effect uh, basically it improves the cohesion within the concrete and tendency to bleed is reduced because it can retain the water more. So, naturally easy compaction easy compaction is possible at lower workability. So, essentially it improves the workability of the mix it increases also the workability of the mix. Uh, interior stability of any kind of extruded concrete anything extruded through you know extruded or any 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 anything any concrete uh, uh, placed through compressed air pneumatically placed concrete. So, it improves actually stability of such concrete basically they are surfactants that is the mechanism surface, surface, surface acting agents and they are organic compound they are organic com compound they are organic compound right as you can see they are organic compounds they have there are two types they are both amphiphilic and hydrophilic what is amphiphilic amphiphilic which means that they have got hydrophobic and hydrophilic both hydrophobic tails and hydrophilic heads. What is hydrophobic? Which will push the water away, reject the water. Hydrophilic goes well with the water. Since they are hydrophilic, therefore, they are soluble in water and they are also soluble in organic solvents. So, they are amphiphilic that is hydrophobic and hydrophilic resulting in you know amphiphilic resulting in hydrophobic and hydrophilic both. So, tail is hydro one tail is you know groups tails are hydrophobic and the head is hydrophilic. So, something attracts it long in a kind of chain on one side they have got molecules which can attract water another side molecules which can reject water. Thus they exhibit hydrophilic water loving and fat loving properties lipophilic fat loving properties. So, hydrophobic group some of them show lipophilic or fat loving properties. So, this is other two things essentially they reduce the surface tension of water by adsorbing at the liquid gas interface. So, they get in actually adsorbed at the liquid gas interface that is water air interface all right and change the surface tension properties of the water surface tension properties of the water. In fact, the charged hydrophilic and remains in water and hydrophobic tail 
traps air bubble. So, therefore, they are at the boundary of water, water and air you know interface at the bound at the air water interface they would be there in the water side the charged part this remains in contact with water the hydrophobic tail traps air bubble all right so at the interface actually in this process they increase the surface tension of, i mean sorry reduce the surface tension of water and bubble formation becomes easy so, easy formation of air cavity or bubble as work required to produce unit area of liquid gas interface is lowered, right. So, easy, easy, easy formation of easy formation of war bubbles because easy formation of bubbles as work unit area and work required to produce, work required to produce, required to produce unit area of liquid gas interface is lowered, right. Liquid gas interface is lowered. How much is this? work you know in the bubble in a bubble in a bubble the pressure inside pressure inside in a bubble the pressure inside inside pressure must be balanced by the outside pressure inside pressure must be balanced by outside you know that must be balanced and it is actually p in is given as p in is equals to p out outside pressure would be p outside pressure plus twice gamma by r because inside the bubble there is you know at the interface the the surface tension the water is there water is there at the interface so water is there at the interface this is the air bubble water is there at the interface water is there at the interface so at this you know you can you can show that the pressure here is twice gamma by r. So, p outside is p out plus 2 gamma plus r is equals to p inside otherwise the bubble will collapse. So, bubble should have sufficient pressure inside p inside must be sufficient p inside must be sufficient such that it can balance the outside pressure and the pressure due to surface tension forces. The work done would be to increase the surface area by dr you know it was 4 pi r square now the area will become 4 pi r plus d r square and which will be 4 pi r square plus 8 pi r d r plus terms involving 4 pi d r square which can be neglected this can be neglected this can be neglected neglected and therefore increase in pressure so delta w will be given by d w will be given by this so d w is given by this d w is given by this. So, pressure so if the surface tension is reduced less work is required if surface tension is reduced less work is re required to maintain the surface in fact this this will also get reduced therefore outside pressure you know at outside p inside pressure is equals to p out. So, this itself will get reduced the possibility of bubble formation actually increases possibility of bubble formation increases. So, easy formation of air cavity or bubbles as work required to produce unit area of liquid gas interface is lowered when surface tension is low. Generally hydrophobic groups are hydrophobic groups generally hydrophobic groups hydrophobic groups is uh, uh, generally are fats oils petroleum fractions hydrophilic ones are carboxylates you know they are carboxylates sulfates sulfonates and phosphates right so these are the ones largely salts of wood resins synthetic detergents salts of petroleum acids and fatty and resinous acids and their salts so salt, these are the materials salts of wood resins, synthetic detergents, salts of petroleum acids etcetera, fatty and resinous acids and their salts. For example, wind salt resin is obtained from you know pine wood, wind salt resin is an aliphatic hydrocarbon extracted from pine wood, extracted from pine wood stumps is pine wood stumps is a common source of air entering agent. So, it is from the 
Binsol resin is one which is obtained from pine wood and that is used that is the common source of air entering agents. So, we said that salts of wood resins therefore, this is one of the example. So, what we have seen that is air entering agent which reduces the surface tension, but then we have another variety called viscosity modifier. Now, viscosity modifying agent, viscosity modifying agent, viscosity modi modifying agent yeah, are you know viscosity modifiers are viscosity modifiers are water retaining they are used in underwater concreting anti washout admixtures they are essentially anti washout admixtures anti water washout admixtures and they have high molecular weight they are soluble polymers so cellulose ethers alginates and polyethylene oxides increase the viscosity of water by interacting through hydrogen bonding. Cellulose ethers, you know, they are basically something, something like you know, crudely we can understand something like gum. A gum you put in water, it will increase viscosity. So some of those materials increase the viscosity of water, and therefore then it can hold on water and the cementitious material together more easily. So they form open branch polymer network in water and essentially lock the water, lock the water, lock the water and lock the water and the cement and sand particles reducing viscosity and increasing the cohesion. So, that is the idea they lock the water, cement and sand reducing viscosity and increasing cohesion. Dosage may be ranging from 0.13 to 1 percent. So, dosage may range from 0.3 to 1 percent. All right dosage may range from 0.3 to 1 percent. So, these are viscosity modifiers used in underground underwater concreting and nowadays in some of the self compacting concrete. Some of the self compacting concrete uses this material because when you use polycarboxylate ether slightly in larger quantity it has a tendency to bleed as we said can cause bleeding, but if you if it has got tendency to bleed one way you can stop is by using a lot of fine met particles which can hold it together use of very much very fine materials which can hold it together. So, very fine fine you know like cementitious or inert uh, material which can hold it together right and uh, that is viscosity uh, or else you can use viscosity modifier which will also block the water cement or cementitious material and send together. So, bleeding would be reduced that was viscosity modifier. Then we have got corrosion inhibitor. They can stop the corrosion process because you know rebar corrosion is one of the major problem, one of the major durability problem in concrete and uh, corrosion inhibitors stops this, corrosion inhibitor stop this, corrosion inhibitor stop this all right. How do they do it? they actually can block anodic or cathodic reactions. Examples of these are nitrite, calcium nitrite, chromates, molybdates, molybdates, amino, amino alcohol and blended with inorganic inhibitors. Calcium nitrite, chromates, molybdates, amino alcohols and amino alcohol blended with inorganic inhibitors they are the ones they are the examples of examples of uh, they are the examples of they are the examples of corrosion inhibitors they can act in two different ways may increase the corrosion threshold right so the point at which corrosion active corrosion starts they may just increase that they might delay the starting of corrosion uh, nitrites helps in making what is called a passive layer, passive layer more stable. Now, a passive layer is the oxide coating over iron or re rebar which protects the steel because steel you cannot you know iron is not a stable compound stable thing it will get oxidized, but if it does not get oxidized to at a very fast rate or to a product which is dangerous 
then it is tolerable. So, dense product at the surface oxide film at the surface of the uh, steel bar is sometimes desirable. So, generally they increase corrosion threshold by making that passive layer stable. So, the oxide layer that is formed oxide layer that is formed over the rebar becomes stable nitrite acts that way all right and less reactive they are less reactive. So, therefore, protect the steel protect the steel right. Okay. So, less reactive by reacting with Fe and producing Fe 2 O 3. So, they might first react with Fe and then allow production of Fe 2 O 3 thus anodic sites are protected. So, thus anodic sites are protected. So, these are anodic inhibitors. Anodic inhibitors actually protect the steel by ensuring that oxides are formed, oxides are stable at the surface of the steel. So, that iron does not get dissolved, the protective layer protects it. These are called anodic inhibitors. Nitrites essentially does this job, they react maybe with the Fe, but then finally Fe 2 O 3 or such oxides would be forming at the surface of the rebar because it will break down right reacting with Fe and then producing Fe 2 O 3 at the second stage and thus protecting the steel. Opposed to this there are some others which are cathodic inhibitors. Now, dosage are 10 to 20 liters per meter cube of concrete as we can see. Amino alcohol alcohols for example, coats metal surface to the monomolecular layer and also inhibit cathodic reaction hence mixed inhibitor. So, the mixed inhibitor both protects in you know, anodic sites and cathodic sites. You know rebar corrosion is an electrochemical process and in the electrochemical process there are some anode in the rebar, some cathode in the rebar right. So, the anode if the coating is there on top of the anode this e Fe cannot dissolve at anode Fe dissolves at cathode cathodic reaction takes place. We will discuss this sometime later on when we talk of rebar corrosion. Now, amino alcohols coat the metal and therefore, uh, inhibits the anodic reaction, but also inhibits the cathodic reaction right and hence mixed inhibitor. Now, what is the cathodic reaction? Cathodic reactions are essentially the reaction between oxygen and hydrox hydroxide with you know absorbing electron to form hydroxyl ion. So, if you can stop that reaction that is cathodic reaction will be stopped then anodic reaction will automatically stop somewhere in the circuit you have to break it. So, cathodic inhibitor reduce corrosion rate by inhibiting cathodic reaction stops the cathodic reaction of oxygen and water with you know which takes electron to form hydroxyl ion. So, sodium hydroxide sodium carbonate ammonium hydroxide increases pH and reduces iron dissolution. So, they increase the pH and reduce because already there are certain amount of hydroxyl ion in the system no further hydroxyl ion can form you know it reduces the dissolution formation of more hydroxyl ion and uh, that is how they protect, protect, protect it cathodically. Phosphates carboxylic acid hydrazine hydrates etcetera hydroazoic acid is uh, H N 3 is hydrogen and nitrogen hydrogen and nitrogen. So, I think it is NH NH 3 is ammonia this is H N 3. So, thus hydroazoic acid and hydrazine hydrate is one of the compounds from it, but it has been observed that some may reduce the compressive strength. There are some side effect from corrosion inhibitors. Uh, so, therefore, they may reduce the compressive strength. So, there has not been uh, not, not very popular, but still there are some available uh, and then can can protect uh, you know or can can protect the rebar to certain extent uh, right but uh, they have their own negative effect. So, that has to be remembered. Waterproofing admixtures they reduce the capillary absorp absorption thus lowers permeability and of hardened concrete. This admixtures when you add to the you know concrete system during mixing in the later stage they act on to the capillary pores in some manner, manner or other and lowers the permeability of hardened concrete. They can be of this kind like uh, pore blocking treatment you know pore blocking treatment 
or hygrophobic pore lining treatment. So, pore blocking treatment or uh, hygrophobic that is water repelling pore lining treatment. Now, hygrophobic property is essentially because of the contact angle between this material and water. You know water and normal surfaces of concrete or many other thing glass let us say it is 0, contact angle is 0. So, water is a wetting liquid for this kind of material surface tension properties. I think we, we discussed some time or we may be discussing some time later on. So, the surface tension properties okay, just let us quickly have can we can have a look at uh, this it will be something like this you see water you put it in water you put water spreads like this. So, the contact angle this angle is 0 this angle is 0, but if you look at mercury mercury on the other hand will will be mercury on the other hand will form some sort of bubble this angle is 140 degree with glass. So, therefore, mercury do is a non wetting liquid. So, this is this we call as contact angle contact angle. Now, contact angle of water with surface is contact angle of water with most of the surface is 0 contact angle contact angle is 0, but if I can make it if the surface changes let us say waxy surface wax on a surface contact angle with water which all changes contact angle of water becomes greater than 90 degree. So, therefore, in a waxy surface you find that water possibly is you know water is possibly not spreading easily not spreading. So, it is forming some sort of a bubble like mercury does in glass. So, therefore, this is this hydrophobic hydro, hydrophobic pore lining uses this principle hydrophobic pore lining uses this principle pore blocking is simply blocking the pore dosage may range up to 5 percent right. So, this damp proofers are based on fatty acid oleic caprylic stearic acid etcetera react with hydration product and block. That means, they will react. So, for blocking blocking product will react with blocking product will react with substrate mainly the calcium hydroxide mainly the calcium hydroxide and produce CHS like product which can block the pore. So, if this material are added to the concrete they can come at the you know they should be able to migrate to the capillary pores at the surface and react with the substrate itself later on to for, for form such products which will block the pore. So, fatty acids like oleic caprylic and stearic acid etcetera they react with the hydration product and block. Wax emulsion from hydrophobic pore lining layers wax emulsion forms hydrophobic pore lining layers and then of course, calcium and aluminum stearates. So, they form hydro hydrophobic you know pore lining layers. So, now, this should do what they when when they are coated onto the capillary surface they come onto the capillary surface the contact angle of water has changed. So, the water wants to when water is trying to enter when water you know by capillary suction uh, the ingress of water by capillary suction becomes then difficult because mercury you cannot like mercury mercury you cannot uh, force into you know mercury you just do not go on its own into any pore any capillary you have to force it. So, here also on its own once the surface changes it becomes hygrophobic liquid water cannot penetrate into it you have to force it, but vapor can of course, move. So, these are hygrophobic lining. Uh, there are varieties of other materials in this line of course, which does the job, but then the generic generically there are two types one is hygrophobic pore lining and another is pore blocking treatment all right. Then there are shrinkage reducing admixtures you see drying of concrete resulting lowering of capillary meniscus and since capillary meniscus will lower the stress is introduced due to surface tension surface tension forces you see surface tension forces uh, would would tend to tend to actually introduce a kinds of stress at the capillary 
boundaries because it is lower, lower you know when the capillary meniscus is lowered. So, this surface tension forces because it was at a at a balanced condition now it has got lowered because some drying has occurred and uh, there will be some surface tension forces that tend to close the capillary and hence shrinkage. So, capillary will try to collapse under this you know surface tension forces. So, shrinkage do occur and then of course, gel pores will also become empty the water will move out from the gel pores subsequently and the, there could be uh, shrinkage and you know of, of concrete. So, drying there is a shrinkage of paste and hence the concrete occurs. Now, glycol and other derivatives operate by interfering with the surface chemistry. So, glycol and other some derivative for example, glycol you know and other derivatives some of its glycol ether derivatives glycol ether derivatives they operate by interfering with the surface chemistry of air water interface within capillary. Thus, reduce the surface tension and consequently reducing effect of shrinkage by stabilizing the capillary. Well, if you look at it air entraining agent also reduces the surface tension, but it has got a head and tail one of them being hydrophobic another being hydrophilic. So, hydrophobic side actually holds on I mean you know hydrophobic sides actually uh, uh, is uh, traps the air bubble, but here this will not happen this simply changes the surface tension at the surface tension of the water and uh, you know water or air water interface at the air water interface uh, within the capillary and therefore, surface tension is reduced and uh, shrinkage action is reduced. So, that is what it does right it does not have a tail which can enter what you know yeah. So, no bubble formation could occur, but only surface tension reduction will occur. So, this was shrinkage reducing admixtures uh, then we have got alkali aggregate reaction inhibiting admixtures. Now, alkali aggregate reaction as you know some of the aggregates some of the minerals present in aggregate can react with can react with uh, uh, sodium and potassium hydroxides that would be present in cement water system because sodium oxide and potassium oxides are present in cement right they are there in the cement usually in small quantity and this might form sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Now, these ones will react with some uh, some you know uh, silica mineral forming alkali silica gel and this gel can adsorb water and expand in volume result in in cracking of concrete. We will again deal with this somewhat later later on when we talk of durability of concrete, but then there are some inhibitors which can stop this kind of reaction. Of course, you have other means of controlling them, but inhibitors can also be used. For example, lithium hydroxide or lithium salts are effective in reducing alkali aggregate reaction because you know sodium, lithium, potassium they belong to same group they belong to same group in the periodic table. So, lithium replaces sodium and lithium silicates gel you know not it is not gelatinous. So, this does not cause any expansion. So, air entraining agent also reduces the alkali aggregate reaction effect somewhat because, because uh, the air voids which are available the expansion can be taken and mineral admixtures are very effective in this, but mainly the you know like like flyers addition in the beginning or or granulated ground blast furnace slags they are very useful. Compounds like silen which are silicon and hydrogen compound like S i H 4 or S i N and H 2 N 2 this sort of formula these are called silens. So, silen compounds and siloxanes are composed of units from R 2 S i O where R is a hydrogen atom or hydrocarbon. So, R 2 S i O H 2 S i O to any other you know C H 3 etcetera. So, these are siloxanes. So, silen and siloxanes materials then silico fluorides together with this one silico fluorides are the other material they are found to be effective in reducing alkali aggregate reaction. In fact, silo, silo, silen and siloxanes are used in uh, 
water repelling system as well, uh, water proofing system as well. We might look into this sometime uh, in connection with surface coating and durability of concrete. So, but silico fluorides together with silence and siloxane also are found to be effective in alkali for reducing alkali aggregate reaction. Calcium phosphate prior to use of use also reduce if you use calcium phosphate with the aggregate prior to their use this also reduces the alkali aggregate reaction ex expansion. As I told you lithium reacts with alkali silicate to produce insoluble lithium silicate. So, this does not form gel and therefore, lower expansion and they also provide with high valency cations to neutralize the osmotic pressure because the pressure which causes cracking has something to do is you know it is osmotic pressure um, in the system we will discuss about that sometime. So, uh, uh, lithium in the second way it, it, uh, it, it acts is it provides with high valency cations to neutralize osmotic pressure. So, that is how alkali aggregate reaction you know uh, uh, can be controlled by use of this kind of inhibiting admixtures alkali aggregate reaction inhibiting admixtures. Silico fluoride silence siloxanes water repellent as I told you they are also water repellent and they allow air entrainment hence able to reduce swelling due to water ingress and gel formation. So, they are used in water repelling as I told you waterproofing system. Calcium phosphate interferes with the dissolution process of silica and gel formation. These are some other material used for alkali aggregate reaction inhibitor. Some lithium salt, but reduces the strength, silen etcetera has no such negative effects. They are reduced as used as water reducing agent as well as can inhibit the and there is another another side of it. Since they can reduce the water uh, ingress, water ingress is a must for alkali aggregate reaction. So, that is another effect of silen, silico fluorides and siloxanes. I think that is what uh, finishes our discussion on chemical admixtures. So, in total what we have seen is we have seen actually water reducing admixtures which in more detail than any other admixtures because they are in the last two lectures actually we have seen because they are the one 60 percent of the admixtures are these ones they are the most common one. Then follows accelerator retarders and we also looked into air entraining agents, corrosion inhibitors, shrinkage reducing admixtures um, and uh, alkali aggregate reaction inhibitors. Uh, etcetera. So, I think with this we just finish our discussion on chemical admixtures. In the next lecture we will look into mineral admixtures. Thank you very much.